Now to our opening session of the Blockchain Marketing Forum. And I'm really pleased to be introducing Marlita Hodesberger, who is Digital Asset Lead at UBS Asset Management. Now, Marlita is going to really help us give a high level uh, look at the very exciting space uh, from a technology perspective of blockchain. So really happy to have you here today at the Blockchain Marketing Forum, Marlita. How are you? Thank you very much, James. And of course, I'm very thrilled to be part of today's event. Um, and yeah, looking forward to sharing some of my views and insights and also obviously connect to, to the network um, as, we, as we go on in the event. Yeah. And, and again, just to kind of caveat, you know, one of the reasons or the main reason we invite you to speak is because you are going to approach this from a completely different angle. You know, you're not a marketing expert, you're a technologist primarily, and someone who can talk about these topics to a marketing audience in financial services and give us a, a quite a, a nice overview of, of kind of where the space is now and kind of what your, uh, what maybe some of your predictions are for the future. So I think one of the things I want to start off with is, is a very high level overview. And it'd be interesting to kind of get your thesis, your your top line, you know, um, bird's eye view of the space now, you know, where are we at now and, and what does the future look like? Well, very happy to, to, to share my views on that. And um, um, as mentioned before, I guess um, blockchain is, is presenting a new tool, which is fundamentally different to how markets, financial markets operate today. Um, to give an example, um, if, we, if you enter into a transaction these days, um, this will include you as the inputter for the transaction and someone at the end of the transaction that you want to invest to, you want to um, transfer money to, whatever this transaction might include. Um, however, in the back of the current market infrastructure, you will have a chain of intermediaries that are involved in making this transaction work. So each of those intermediaries, they take information, they manipulate them, they forward them to the next intermediary until at, at the end of the chain, it, it arrives where it was ultimately, you know, supposed to, to end up. And this chain type of transaction mechanism um, is just presenting some frictions that, I mean, we got along with over the last 30 years and we have tried to optimize this. But at the end, just to give you an example, it still means if you want to do an equity trade today, it takes at least one to two days until the transaction is finally being completed. Um, and now if we switch over to the, the concept of blockchain, um, we have a complete new setup and a new tool set that is turning this whole concept um, upside down because instead of having these change of, chains of intermediaries being lined up, um, the idea is to bring all the different participants of the ecosystem and of the um, well, the transaction in the example I made onto one platform and hence creating a network of peer-to-peer -peer intermediaries and, and interactions. Um, and on the back of this very fundamental concept, there is a huge potential and benefits that, um, that we want to take advantage of. Yeah, there's a lot to unpick there. And I think, you know, one the title of your, of your talk is kind of this metaphor of, of moving away from a, a chain to a network. And it's obviously quite contradictory because blockchain has, <laughs> has chain in it, but it's a really beautiful metaphor I think you, you use. And I kind of will unpick that a bit later on, but I suppose moving more specifically to the asset management space, how is this technology impacting the asset management space and, and kind of what do you see as the best use cases for what technology, you know, um, as we go into 2022? So I guess um, there's a broad set of use cases and, and I think concepts out there. But from, from our perspective as an asset manager, I mean, the name says it, right? We are, we are looking at assets. Our service is helping clients to get access to markets and have someone that is helping them to create their financial goals or reach their financial goals. So breaking this high-level concept down into, let's say, sub-themes. We have identified two main um, areas. One is around the infrastructure. I mentioned this before. So the idea is here 
can we use the benefits of this network approach peer to peer in order to move closer to our clients, to build direct relationships, or if we still go through certain intermediaries, make sure they get better information, more relevant information, and quicker information. So it's about transparency, speed, and user experiences, just again, from, a, from an infrastructure and solution perspective. And that's again, what I call infrastructure. But on the back of this, there's also a very fundamental additional dimension, which is around the asset itself. So what we are seeing right now, and I guess everyone looking into the digital asset market, we have different forms of, of assets becoming digital or tokenized, what we typically use as a technical term. And um, just to give you an insight, also double clicking into this box of digital assets as underlyings for investment. Here we have, of course, this, the emerging space of, of, of crypto assets. Obviously, it's, it's all in, in the news. And I guess everybody, to some extent, has, a crop, has come across this term. But then on top, we, we see and we believe other type of assets will also become digitized, being, for example, real estate, art, Many of you will, might have seen or might have come across the term NFT, non-fungible token, which is a hot topic right now in, in a, in a, in a, from a concept perspective in making art investable, bankable, and even shareable among investors. So again, this whole new universe of digital assets that our clients would like to invest into um, is, is, a, is a huge topic that I'm sure will, will be around and also give us some headache to be honest uh, for the next few years yeah again i think i think from a you know talking from a more marketing perspective this is this is this is so interesting because i think when we spoke before about this kind of this this move to networks this kind of big kind of interlinking of different uh, industries and sectors and technologies kind of melding this together i think one thing which was really illuminating was was this idea that this change is so important for, for marketeers, for anyone who's in, you know, who's in financial services or who's involved in finance or in banking or asset management space, you're tasked with, you know, creating new campaigns and, 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 and you know, messages to essentially drive business growth. It's really important to understand the basics of this technology because it's actually going to impact the, 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 the marketing experience. And I think it'd be quite interesting to kind of hear your thoughts on that as far as how how the, the change in experience, how the, the change in, in, in client experience is going to impact, I suppose, the, 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 the world of marketing, uh, even if we don't know it yet. Excellent point. And I guess here we really are spot on in this intersection between my world and the marketing or the, the other side of things, as yeah. you just described. So let me just maybe draw a picture um, of this new type of marketing from our end and how and where we we see some some sweet spots where we will we will have some some great opportunities so again just just to recall blockchain enables direct distribution to our end clients and by definition that somehow explains that today we oftentimes have intermediaries sitting between us and the ultimate client Hence, we are losing lots of information about who are our clients, what kind of products are they looking for, and what combinations. So we always get a very limited piece of information who, who our clients are, their behaviors. And hence, also, we have limited options to tailor our products to their needs. Now, blockchain will help us really to address maybe you, James, as an individual, Maybe when you would browse through your LinkedIn uh, um, stream, you might want to find an advertisement by UBS, but not just you know this general type of information about a theme that doesn't really matter for you, but you might want to have something, let's talk about ESG, um, a specific advertisement that addresses the question, how can we make the world a better place um, with an investment decision? Um, so we want to make sure we're only showing themes to you that matter, First of all, and secondly, very important as well, we would the technology creates an option for you to act right away on this, meaning I could not just advertise it in a tailored way to you, but I could offer to you maybe a button, a simple button, like you would go to Amazon and buy some pair of shoes. But in that case, a button where you would instantly be able to invest into our product. 
So I believe that's kind of the, the, the key piece here. We need partners and we need networks and uh, well, platforms in that sense that would address and would help us to make sure we receive information on the clients they are having on their platforms and both ways we want to, to improve the way and giving the right information, the relevant information to the individual investor being active on the various uh, platforms that we can think of. And again, this can be social media, but this can also be, um, just to make the example, um, often, oftentimes being used of, of Amazon, where today people are rather looking for physical products um, and services, but not really financial products, just because, again, technology does not efficiently and conveniently allow them uh, to, to make not just a decision, but to, 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 to act on their decision right away yeah. and not going to the bank branch and fill out a form. Again, I mentioned this before, and waiting a week until you get some notification on what has happened. Yeah. And I think one of the things which is quite scary about that from a marketing perspective is, is it feels like there is, there is going to be well, it's good. It's good in some ways because content marketing and I suppose uh, you know the future of this means that actually the content needs are going to be at the moment. We are not anywhere near the level of content personalization which this technology is going to demand from from marketing communication scenes. If if what you say is you know, and again, this is all postulation. It's not you know this is this is all you know looking into a crystal ball slightly, but. If we are in a future where you know you could, as, as an asset management uh, uh, firm or as a bank or any other financial service institution, offer a a investment vehicle, an investment um, a product or solution directly to your your you know, to to your audience, um, you would then, through, through by extension, we, or we would as marketeers have to create a really personalized content experience on top of that because the technology will demand that level of personalization. So if anything, content marketing teams across the world are going to be very, very busy over the next few years if this does come to fruition. Absolutely. But just to resonate on that, I mean, also for us as the, the product, you know, yeah. owner um, and the, the, well, the, the, the product builder for us, this creates a huge headache in a sense that yeah. today we have, you know, usually we have those fact sheets being produced once a month for each product. And then we say like, okay, cl dear client, have a look. There are different, different themes. Click on it. You can seek some information. But tailoring this to the individual, making sure we have the right information, not just right, but also accurate and timely available, tailored to each and individual uh, needs and, and, and beliefs maybe as well um, is a huge task for us. Um, so I guess at the end, things will need to come together. We will need, we will need to step up in not just getting more information, but also then taking the right conclusions from that. Because we know, I mean, data can be just data. You need to have some sort of intelligence around it to yeah. make sure you come to a sound conclusion, which means if I look at your data, James, from your um, platform X profile and... Um, I need to make sure I come to the right conclusion, not offering you maybe the wrong product that is actually not addressing your needs and your beliefs. So um, again, content and flexibility around content, but also client data and this forth and back between product provider and the platforms. And of course, the marketeers in between helping us on that journey will be a very important component. And, and so is it, what you're saying is in many ways that there will be, or there should be, or, or, or it will be very advantageous for the teams of the future to almost have a diverse set of skills in that team. Because I'm thinking, I, I'm not a technologist. I don't understand technology. I mean, we understand, you know, uh, how to communicate, market, you know, how to influence, how to persuade. Um, but it'd be really helpful for me to have someone in, in my team who understands technology because they're, they're kind of feeding each other because the content will be fed off the data, will be fed off the, of the user experience of the actual person that you're, you're, you're communicating with. There's going to be this feedback loop. And it's equally, for me, incredibly exciting, but also a bit 
daunting because I, I, I think there's just going to be this massive, massive content need. And it's, it, it's, it's almost now, as you said, things are speeding up. You know, you, you in the past could pro- release a, a nice little, you know, overview of, of, of a certain space or, you know, um, a, a weekly newsletter or it used to be a monthly. Now it's a weekly, uh, you know, it's moving towards the daily now, I think, on social media, a daily update because the news, everything's moving faster but what you're suggesting is actually you're going to have to have minute by minute, you know, things are going to have to be changing live when people are looking at the content. It's going to be, uh, there, there's so much to, it, it, it just feels like this technology is going to completely change how we approach communications because you're removing a whole sector, a whole, a whole, I suppose, a whole element of that traditional experience between an asset management uh, and and their clients, and that's going to have massive implications for all of us, I suppose. Absolutely, as you say, the frequency speed will increase. So the yeah. cycles that we typically had, maybe back in the past, where it was still paper and and letters, it was once a month. Now we had have broken it down due to some sort of digitization to a daily or maybe weekly frequency. But still, one of the major challenges is making sure, and we shall not forget, right? We are in a highly regulated space, so we cannot afford to make any mistakes here. We cannot afford to present wrong data, inaccurate data to unsuitable people. So that's also just maybe to to phrase this here, it's we we have to make sure we only present products to an individual that is suitable to invest into this product because from a risk perspective, it is actually meeting his requirements. So that's kind of an obstacle and uh, from a regulatory perspective, but I guess from a data and process perspective is, is exactly what you mentioned. Um, efficiency, um, scalability, and flexibility. These are very nice words, but um, it's, it's still, I guess, uh, it will be a, 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 yeah, it will be a challenge to move from the current static data environment, oftentimes very manual, to this beautiful new world of plug and play and slice and dice um, that that we just kind of draw in the in the crystal ball. Yeah, and I think this is this is leading to this this idea of experience marketing. I think it's an absolutely huge. You know, there, there's several different. You know, I, I always believe that you know change. There's never one variable for change. There's almost there's almost like seven or eight different factors which combine culturally to influence massive change in society. And I think obviously. Uh, the de- technology revolution we're speaking about is just one factor, and I think on the other side you have this whole, you know, this whole uh, uh, realization that experience marketing is so important. So you know, you're always marketing to people. So there's this idea, and I suppose in the old world of marketing, where you have your marketing, you put your banner up, you put your poster up, you go, "This is the marketing," and then someone becomes a customer, and you go, "Well, now, no, we're not doing anything now. We've done our job." Actually, the the, the experience of, of 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 client acquisition. Is you're always marketing when you send an email, when you are talking to someone who are, you know, if you have a problem, the customer service problem, you're always marketing. You're always trying to engage your community. You're always trying to foster new relationships. And that has a, a massive effect. And I feel like the marketing as a whole is going to be a responsibility for everyone in the business because, because y- y- you know, we're not going to be in a world where you can say to your marketing team, deal with it. You know, deal with the um, uh, uh, all the uh, uh, the communications because there's going to be that communication happening all the time, um, and I suppose that raises another point around the challenges and obstacles. What are the? You know, obviously, there's there's some fantastic. Um, you know, we, I think we're speaking about a utopia in which we have this great world where everyone can just have this really personalized experience and you as a, as a bank can, can, can talk just to the people you want to and, and no one else will hear it. It's just a perfect. What are the, but obviously we don't live in utopia. We live in reality. What do you see as the major kind of challenges and obstacles, which needs to be overcome before, you know, this technology can be truly realized in its, in its, in its full form. So, Broadly speaking, I'd, I'd say there are two buckets of, of main challenges we're facing as of now. So I mentioned this before, regulation. That's a, that's a big chunk of, of obstacle, just because um, we have lots of regulations that are actually not really fitting into this network type of um, 
concept where data being shared peer to peer, where you also have maybe change of roles where certain actors might disappear, others will take over new roles. And again, we need to make sure not just on a, let's say, national level, but even on a international cross jurisdictional level to create a um, regulatory playing field that defines rules and clear rules that make sure we as a product provider, promoter are in line and we are actually not moving outside of the regulated box that is being put on us um, for a good reason, right? Because of course, uh, regulators want to protect to protect our in investors and clients from, from wrong decisions. So again, regulation is a huge topic. And the second piece, maybe just as important and critical is the technology. I mean, we talked about blockchain, but I mean, what is blockchain? There is not this one blockchain uh, protocol that has, you know, that will take over the world. We do see certain projects and maybe even advanced type of projects, I'm referring maybe to Ethereum, so these kind of open, open and permissionless blockchains that are out there. But there's another, and there's a bunch of other protocols and uh, solutions that are emerging that are being built. And of course, it's, it's, a, it's a tough call at this point in time, very early to the game, to make a decision, which is the technology that we need to adopt, um, that we need to get familiar with. And maybe also to resonate what you mentioned before, I mean, um, obviously I'm not a cryptographic expert, I'm also rather coming from the business side. So yeah. the intersection between the, also the talent and the, the know-how and the learnings around combining our business logic, um, the technological requirements, the regulatory framework that by no mean can be jeopardized. Um, we need to make sure this fits together, right? And there's, again, these are moving pieces that in my view are moving in parallel, but at the end, they will need to come together in making sure we have the right solution for the right person at the right point in time in a convenient manner. Yeah, and it's really exciting. I think obviously your role is 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 just and the interesting, you know, for you to to kind of expand upon the kind of like you know your position and kind of what your responsibilities are, and, and I suppose what what the kind of future is, and really from the UBS asset management's position in terms of how you're juggling, you know, these exciting possibilities but tempering with the very real reality that there are a lot of 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 compliance and regulatory issues which need to be overcome and i suppose how are you navigating that how you how you kind of obviously you as a as a person but actually as a business how are you tempering wild um expectations and and glorious uh, a technological utopia from i say some areas of individuals who are very excited about technology with the very real and i think not really often spoken about because it's not really interesting. It's kind of a bit of a, sometimes a dampener, but a very real uh, headache of, of national, international uh, regulation and compliance. Is there a, well, is there kind of a middle ground from which you're operating it or, or is it all kind of just, how are you kind of navigating that in terms of a business perspective? So I think what is just crucial in that regards, again, yeah. we talk about to some extent five, maybe 10 years time horizons um, yeah. again, I don't have any glass balls, so it's, it's hard yeah. to make a prediction. But I think, um, and oftentimes I experience when I sit at the table with people and we talk about this visionary, beautiful new world, we all, in most of the cases, all the people at the table will agree, well, this is where we will end up. Yeah. But the, the tricky, tricky question is how do we get there, right? Yes, and obviously there are, diff there, there are different approaches. You can just wait and see and wait for the right moment in time whenever sky is clear all answers have been you know, given, and then you just start moving into that space. Um, we believe um, that's quite a risky game because um, if you wait that long, you might miss the train because and that's the fundamental thing. And that's why we, we have a different approach on that. We try to cut it into smaller pieces and move the letter up, step by step up, meaning starting, for example, with small proof of concepts around certain use case ideas, and then really put our foot into the water for the first time. Of course, engaging our organization, our different functions, creating a learning environment, 
stepping up on, let's say, the assumptions and the hypothesis that we had maybe in our minds before we engaged into those proof of concepts. And of course, once finalized, take our conclusions and then make a decision. Shall we go deeper? Shall we move to the side? Shall we maybe have a follow-up in a different manner? And, and I guess this kind of funnel approach, starting yeah. broad and agile, and then step by step moving ahead gives you a good, um, a good, you know, foundation to navigate through this because you are still flexible. You take the people in your organization on the journey, and of course, obviously, also you create some success stories that also will convince decision makers within the organization, hopefully, to commit further resources in order then maybe from a small you know plant building it up onto a strong tree that we will see then in a few years yeah i think you know from from, from my perspective personal perspective and i suppose it's slightly smaller i mean i mean arguably social media has had probably the the same impact in terms of societal change as i think blockchain technology will do in the next 10 years you know six or seven years ago social media really wasn't taken at all seriously by many any institutions across the world uh, when it came, particularly in, like, in, in the world of, of, of finance. But what we've seen is, I think, a, 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 t- a tempered, measured realisation of just how important social media is, um, whilst being very aware of the, you know, the considerations, the limitations which, which social media presents, you know, the problems which social media presents in terms of regulatory compliance. And it sounds like a similar approach has been a, a taking approaching the technology you know it's kind of it's nice to hear that you are or there is a an effort to to at least move in this space because as you said you don't want to get left behind and i think as an individual you know for everyone on this on this and in, 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 in listening in today or hopefully going to contribute to the q a after this um it's super important to i think understand these concepts to kind of realize the, the world is changing and, and and these technologies are coming you know people are looking at them seriously um, and, and not kind of get too wedded on, on on the past. And, you know, I'm guilty of it. I think we all are guilty of it, of, of the nice status quo. But ultimately, that that world is is changing. And, um, yeah, it, it's incredibly exciting. And, and I just want to obviously say, you know, thank you so much for obviously giving some of your insights. Um, it, it's going to be a really exciting 18 months. Um, did you have any kind of final thoughts on, on, I suppose, what the future holds? Do you have any any predictions for us? Or, or do you not want to put yourself... Uh, out there too much to for me to look back in a year and say you are right or you are wrong i i guess i guess making a prediction a more specific prediction than the world will be a lot better for yeah. for for all of us um is is would be a great a big call so um, i think there's no point right now in making any strong um yeah. predictions basically i i think we are we are aligned in the sense that technology will enable us to move closer to our clients. We will need partners. We will need to step up with the challenges that come along with this. But at the same time, it creates such a big, you know, um, op- set of opportunities. And, and here, I guess, we have a somehow, somehow a game changer. So my, my, my call would be to everyone, um, either you get engaged or you should maybe consider doing something else um, in the midterm because, um, it's, it's just going to heat up um, even more. And yeah, I'm much looking forward to this, of course, um, um, being on the journey. And what I typically would say is, again, people should understand it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So we should not overrush, but still we need to get into a constant pace and also build up some endurance, um, which will be required because it will not be a walk in the park for sure. On that note, I think is a perfect time to segue into the Q&A. So uh, thank you so much. And there, we're opening up the floor for some questions.